<laughs> the chief at the Oxen County Sheriff's Department, and uh, he tells me that he's uh, that they're in the middle of some FOIA dispute with Mr. Lantine. Guarded optimism walks to the result in shedding some light on this unresolved issue. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Turkey went down, it's torn off. Hey, buddy. I like go. Well, if you guys don't remember Mr. Lang Tang, no? Yeah. Neil? 59, 59 calls in one day at the oh, office last that, year. Oh, I do remember that. Oh, yes. With his rangeways and the Dean Road and the other roads up there and all mm -hmm. that, so I was kind of leery. We have provided, we've bent over the backwards to give them everything. There's always another request coming from Mr. Lang Tang. Now we'll open the work session on LD 685, an act to codify that Freedom of Access Act and Freedom of Information Act requests are not hate crimes. And we'll um, hear first from our analyst. So under Title 17, Section 2931 of the Maine Revised Statutes, it's a Class D crime to, by force or threat of force, intentionally injure, intimidate, or interfere with, or to intentionally attempt to injure, intimidate, or interfere with, or to intentionally oppress or threaten any person in the other person's free exercise of their rights under the federal or state constitution or federal or state law. So um, a class D crime is punishable by less than one year incarceration and up to a $2,000 fine. So the bill clarifies that a request for a public record under the Freedom of Access Act or the Federal Freedom of Information Act is not a violation of this criminal statute. The bill's proponents express concern that a member of the Right to Know Advisory Commission recently publicly characterized certain types of public records requests made to school districts as a form of hate speech intended to discourage public support for certain types of students. They urged the committee to support this bill to clarify that school districts and other government organizations may not determine that certain FOA or FOIA, FOIA requests are invalid because of the perceived motivations of the person making the request. Um, some of the bill's proponents also raised concerns regarding the lack of a firm deadline for responding to FOA requests in current law and the large fees that are sometimes charged for FOA requests under current law. So under the Freedom of Access Act, a public agency or official must acknowledge receipt of a FOA request within five working days of receiving the request and must also, within a reasonable time of receiving the request, provide a good faith, non-biting estimate of the time within which the agency or official will comply with the request. An agency or official that refuses a FOA request must also provide written notice of the denial and of the reasons for the denial within five days. And if the reason for the denial is that the request is unduly burdensome or oppressive, the agency or official must file a request for an order of protection in the Superior Court within 30 days of receiving the request. Although FOA does not establish a deadline for the fulfillment of public records requests, um, current law provides that the agency or official receiving the request may require payment of authorized costs before the public record is provided to the requester if the cost exceeds, exceeds $100 or the requester has previously failed to pay a fee for a FOA request. As far as costs are concerned, under current law, within a reasonable time of receiving the request, the agency or official must provide an estimate of the time necessary to complete the request and if the estimated total cost is greater than $30, the agency or official must notify the requester of the total cost before proceeding with the request. Current law authorizes the agency or official to charge a reasonable fee for copying of no more than 10 cents per black and white standard eight and a half by 11 inch page, a fee of $25 per hour for every hour after the first two hours of staff time for searching for retrieving and compiling the requested information, they can also charge the actual cost to convert the public record into a usable format and the actual mailing cost for mailing a copy of the record. Current law authorizes the agency or official to waive this fee if the requester is indigent or if the release of the public record 
requested is likely to contribute significantly to public understanding of the operations or activities of government and is not primarily in the commercial interest of the requester. There is related legislation pending, so LD 1208, which was re a committee bill reported out, but it will, it's coming back for public hearing, an act to implement the recommendations of the Right to Know Advisory Commission concerning time estimates for responding to public records requests. That bill would clarify that an agency or official must not only specify how much time the agency will spend in responding to a record request, so not only the staff time, but also provide the requester an estimate of the time frame within which the agency or official will respond to the request. It also clarifies the language regarding fees charged for staff, staff I can't speak, staff time spent searching for retrieving and compiling record requests. And LD1208 also increases from $30 to $50, the threshold triggering the requirement to provide a cost estimate before proceeding with the request. The Criminal Law Advisory Commission submitted testimony opposing the bill for several reasons. First, CLAC was not aware of any circumstances where requests for information under FOA have been inappropriately charged as criminal offenses. Second, CLAC noted that all communications, including communications that contain a FOA request, can also include threats that are considered crimes under existing law. One example in their testimony, uh, CLAC pointed out that a threat that intentionally or knowingly places Another person in fear of imminent bodily injury constitutes the Class D crime of criminal threatening under current law. CLAC asserts that it's in inappropriate to immunize conduct in advance without information on what the protected conduct may consist of or specific definition of the protected conduct. Third, CLAC noted that federal FOIA requests would not be processed by main state agencies or political subdivisions. The Maine Press Association, testified neither for nor against the bill, asserted that full requests do not fit the statutory definition of the crime, um, which would be amended in the bill. I was asked, has the possibility of a hate crime been raised as a reason not to comply with a full request in the past? As I do not know about all full requests that have ever been issued to anyone, I went to the only person I could think of, who was Brenda Kilty, who's the public access ombudsman. And she indicated by email in my in response to my question that she's not heard of any actual denial of a FOA request based on either hate speech or a hate crime. And we um, have a preliminary fiscal impact statement that indicates the bill would have no fiscal impact. Thank you, uh, Janet. Questions, committee members? Not seeing any. Um, there any committee discussion? Representative Andrews, is there anything you wished to share with us before we move on? Sure, I, I just feel like this is a proactive move to protect our constituents' right to know. I think if somebody in that position of power, like the Keel Wallach was, says something like that, we need to go out of our way to codify, you know, that that can't happen in the future. So it's a prophylactic measure for me to be proactive in protecting your constituents' right to know. Um, yeah, I would just like to clarify, um, because I was at that um, Right to Know Advisory Committee meeting, I did not hear her make any um, threat of force or, or um, commit any intentional injury. And so I think it's... Um, I think that we're I guess I'll stop there. And did you wish to respond? Just to follow up on that, I think she well, she definitely said that full requests on certain subject matters are hate speech. And we could probably argue semantics as to whether hate speech is actually a hate crime by statute, but I think the intent was there to classify a certain requests for information and kind of devalue them so people wouldn't have to fulfill them or pay them attention in the future which was problematic to me and which was the catalyst for this bill. Uh, Representative Lee? I, I sh share Representative Andrew's uh, concerns about the comments and the manner in which they're contrary to the policy intent of the Freedom of Access Act. I don't share the concern that agencies or municipalities or anyone else subject to the Freedom of Access Act would seriously use this 
as a means of uh, preventing those Freedom of Access Act requests. And so um, I, I'm in opposition to the bill, but share the concerns about the comments. Thank you. Other discussion committee members? Yeah, and I, I guess I would just highlight that Clack indicated that um, there aren't, they're not aware of any circumstances where requests for information under FOA have been inappropriately charged as criminal offenses. So that is further persuasive to me that, that this proposal is not needed. Um, is there any additional discussion? Uh, somebody wish to be recognized for the purpose of making a motion? Representative Lee? I'd move out not to pass. And is there a second? Seconded by Representative Moriarty. Any discussion? Uh, Representative Henderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to quote from Representative Andrews' testimony, uh, just for the record. I believe that this quote was taken from the meeting in question that mm -hmm. Representative Andrews overheard. It said, our great concern with the freedom of access requests our district have been receiving is that they target gay, lesbian, and transgender students. If these types of targeted FOIA requests are allowed to go forward and make no mistake, these requests are intended to discourage public support for all students, regardless of their gender identity. It will be despicable. It will be despicable misuse of FOA law, and then ellipsis. Personally, I believe these requests are just another form of hate speech. Thank you for reading that. Uh, any other comment, committee members? Uh, Representative Kuhn. Yeah, I just like to like to um, just reiterate that we did not have any evidence that any requests had been denied on this basis, and so I, I fully support residents' right to know uh, rights. Uh, but it seems like the law is is working right now in this respect. Of uh, Representative Andrews, Madam Chair, just to follow up to that, if we put this in statute, it will guarantee that that will never happen. You wouldn't have to wonder about it or give somebody the opportunity to do it, and then have to come back and pass this law in a future session. And I said it's proactive uh, to protect against people diminishing parents or anyone's right to know, for that matter. I think we live in a very hyper partisan, hyper political, crazy world, and I think people do things that they shouldn't all the time, and I think this protects the base right to know of our constituents in Maine. That's why I put in the bill. Oh. Um, any other comments, committee members? Is the committee ready for a vote? It appears that we are. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Carney. I am embarrassed to ask this question, but the motion is an ought not to pass. Is that correct? I have an ought not to pass by Representative Lee and seconded by Representative Moriarty. Thank you. Um, yes. Senator Carney votes yes. Representative Moonen. Yes. Representative Moonen votes yes. Senator Lightford. Representative Poirier. No. Representative Poirier votes no. Representative Galgay Reckett. Yes. Representative Galgay Reckett votes yes. Representative Kuhn. Yes. Representative Kuhn votes yes. Representative Henderson. No. Representative Henderson votes no. Representative Moriarty. Yes. Representative Moriarty votes yes. Senator Bailey. Representative Sheehan. Representative Dana. Representative Lee. Yes. Representative Lee votes yes. Representative Andrews. No. Representative Andrews votes no. Representative Hagan. I'll recall the absentees. Senator Lightford. Senator Lightford is absent. Senator Bailey. Senator Bailey is absent. Representative Sheehan. Representative Sheehan is absent. Representative Dana. Representative Dana is absent. Representative Hagan. Representative Hagan is absent.
Madam Chair, I have six members voting in the affirmative, three in the negative, and five members are absent. And that is the vote of the committee. Thank you very much. And for those who voted against the motion, could you let us know what your report is? Hot to pass. Hot to pass for everybody? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify that straight because we already know there's no fiscal delegated. Okay. All right. Thank you. And with that, um, we've concluded our uh, work session um, on this bill. The chief at the Austin County Sheriff's Department, and uh, he tells me that he's uh, that they're in the middle of some FOIA dispute with Mr. Lanty. Guarded optimism walks to the result in shedding some light on this unresolved issue. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Turkey went down, pull him off. Hey, buddy. How'd that go? Huh? How'd that go? <laughs> well, if you guys don't remember Mr. Lang Tang. No? Yeah. Hey. 59, 59 calls in one day at the oh, office that, last that, year. I do remember that. Oh, yes. With his rangeways and the Dean Road and the other roads up there and all mm -hmm. that. So I was kind of leery. We have provided, we've bent over the backwards to give them everything. But there's always another request coming from Mr. Lantang.